I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and I'm back with my 1981 Lectra Motors Lectra 2 Plus 2. Today I'd like to bring the car a little bit into the modern world and install this thing right here. This is a charging port that will allow me to charge this car off of pretty much any of the electric vehicle charging ports that you see around the world today. Once I install this connector and a whole lot of circuitry which includes a CAN bus computer system, I'll be able to pull up to one of the charging ports and plug in the standard connector into this car and charge it. If I can get this connector installed and working properly, that means the car will have a longer range because I'll be able to stop at charging stations along the way and charge the car up. Let's take a look at what I got here. I got all this stuff from Thunderstruck Motor and that is because this charger can be programmable. I can move all of this stuff to another car if I want to. It doesn't matter if it has the same type of batteries, a different voltage, whatever. I can reprogram this and reuse it. So this is the battery charger itself. A whole bunch of connectors here. Did come with the matching connectors so I can put these onto the wiring that I'm going to connect up to the charger. Came with a length of heavy duty cable here and I assume that this goes from the plug to the charger. We'll find out about that later. Came with some smaller wiring. This is for all the CAN bus stuff. And then here is the charge controller right here. This is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. In the diagrams on the website it looked like this might be quite a bit bigger. Almost looked like it might even be the same size as this. So pleasantly surprised that this is very small. And then it came with a little kit so that you can plug your computer up to this stuff and reprogram it. Oh, and let's not forget it came with a lot of instructions. So I'm not sure what the install time is going to be on this, but I'm gonna start laying out some of this stuff and trying to figure out where I wanna put it. I've mocked up the charging plug inside the fuel cap there. I just have some self-tapping screws in there temporarily but it looks like that's going to work well. I don't have any room up front for the charger, so I think I'm going to set the charger right behind that connector, right here in this area somewhere. I think this position for the charger looks pretty good. The thickest wires that I have are those running to the batteries, which is this connector here, and those running to the charger plug right here. The charger plug is right behind the charger, so those don't have to be very long. One end of the battery is actually only gonna be right there. And then the only long, thick wire that I'll have to run is the one that goes from the negative side of the battery all the way up to the front of the car. Here's the wiring done for the charger now. This is the connector. This runs to the batteries. This right here, this is a battery uh, status. It kind of shows, is your battery charged less than 80%? between 80% and 100, and if it's fully charged. And then this one here runs behind the charger to the charging port. These other two cables are not going to be used at the moment. This is a 12 volt charger port, so if you have a 12 volt battery, which I do in this case that I wanna charge up, I can plug this onto it to charge that battery. And this is a driveway connector. You hook this up to an alarm or an interrupt that will prevent you from driving away or alert you to not drive away while you're still plugged into the charger. So that's it for the charger wiring. And then I have some of the computer wiring sitting here. Um, I have two wires that run from the charger connector, which are these ones here. One is the proximity sensor and one is the signal. And these will have to be run to the ECU that provides both uh, CAN bus communications uh, and also runs the charger. These wires right here are the CAN bus communication wires. These will be connected from the charger to the computer, which is right here. So I'll need to mount this somewhere and then wire up a bunch of little wires to turn it on with the ignition and such and also connect it up to the charger. If you're planning on doing an installation of this on your own, uh, doing these big thick cables is one thing you need to solder, crimp them, but doing these little computer connections is actually just push right in. So if you want to insert a wire, just find the right port to put it in and push it in. 
and automatically grabs onto it, grabs onto it real tight, and you'll need the removal tool to get that back out of there. So wiring up the computer, it's actually a lot easier and quicker than it looks. Everything I need is connected now. I have the AC input, the output to the batteries, the connection, this is the CAN bus connection from the charger to the EVCC, and then the rest is all power wires from the EVCC and the pilot and the signal wire to the connector for the charger input. Before I connect this to the wall, I need to connect a computer to it and make sure that it's set up correctly. I've disconnected the battery cables so that it doesn't try to charge my batteries at an incorrect voltage. So let's get the computer out, connect it up to the EVCC, and see what the parameters are. Right now I have my ignition turned on so that my EVCC is turned on. And to connect the computer to it, you do that with the stereo plug to USB adapter. So I'll just plug that into the EVCC. Now I need to open up a serial communication port to it. In my case, it's on COM5. Okay, we are connected. Now I want to type in the command show. You can see here that we are in the state drive because the ignition is on. So we are in the drive mode. The other important thing is the proximity value is not connected, which is true because we are not plugged into the wall right now. Now we'll do the command show C. That will bring up the configuration. We need to double check a couple values here. Max V in my case is set to 129.6 volts. The max current is 23 amps. So the charger is set up correctly for my batteries. And another value that you might want to look at is the termination time. In my case, it's set to 24 hours. So if the battery doesn't charge up the batteries in 24 hours, it will turn itself off. Everything looks good here, so I'm going to plug it into the wall now. Again, my batteries are still disconnected. We can see the charger is now turning on. And over here on the screen, I am have, I have a trace going that is showing the outputs from the charger. And right now, it's trying to charge at about... 120 to 126 volts. Obviously there's no current flow because it's not hooked up to a battery, but now we've seen that everything here appears to be working. So I'm gonna unplug it from the wall, plug in my batteries, and then we can plug it into the wall and see if it starts charging. All right, it's disconnected from the wall and I do need to take it out of drive mode. So I'll have to turn the ignition off as well. Okay, ignition is off, battery is connected, I'm going to plug it into the wall. Charger starting up. Starting to ramp up in current. Right now it is charging at 114 volts at around 12 amps. You can see here our battery status. So the batteries are charged at less than 80%. Now we're up to the 23 amps. We're charging at 116 volts. Now all I have to do is let this sit and charge the car up. If everything goes well here, we'll take it for a drive. Try it on one of the public chargers. I should show you what I have plugged into the wall. This is the car kit from Thunderstruck Motors. So this right here is a 50 amp 220 box. It's an extension that runs over to my RV plug. And then right here is the little computer for the charger. Communicates with the car, lets it know what it wants. And then just plug this end right here into the car. Well, let's take it over to the local gas station where they have a plug in and see if it works. This will be the longest trip that I've taken with it. I've only gone up and down the road so far. Hope I make it. It's funny how quiet this car is. I can hear all the cars around me running, but mine is making absolutely no noise whatsoever. You can hear the Jeep beside me shut off. Their engine just started up again when they gave it gas from the stoplight. It's funny, all the vehicles next to me, the engines have shut off now. I haven't 
notice that there's so many modern vehicles that turn their engines off uh, like this because I'm always driving something that is noisy. Here we are. This uh, truck stop has some new EV stations. Nobody's at them. Back up to one of these and try it out. I'll be honest, I've never actually used one of these before, but I did sign up for the app. This one uses the ChargePoint app here in the U.S. Hold that up. It's authorizing. Now we can plug it in. Okay, that one's different than mine. This one here looks like mine as well, but it's got this extra thing here. Not quite sure we can do that about that but that's the plug that I need right this one's got the plug I need right there not sure what I can do about plugging that into my car though not sure I have room underneath that but let's try it out well it looks like this is not gonna work this is interfering with the bottom of this here and actually won't let me plug this in well that was a bust let's go take a look at some others all right, I bought a new hotel that was just built here. This is brand new Courtyard by Marriott. And as you see behind me, a couple EV chargers. Now these do have the connection to connect to my car. It's $2 for people staying the night, $4 per hour for anyone else that wants to come and use them. But they are free and open for everyone to use. So the Courtyard here, I can plug my car into. So it looks, looks like I need to install an app to use this one as well get that downloaded okay I've got the app installed what I need to do is scan that QR code that's being displayed on the screen there now it says that I can pay for it okay connect it to the vehicle Yes. So it's start charging. It says preparing. And it's charging. There's a charger right there. If we come over here, you see the light flashing there, the red light there, and real hard to see, but the red light on the charger. So it is charging. So what did I learn? Well, I learned that not all charging stations are the same uh, I knew that you cannot plug any EV into a Tesla charger and apparently there is still not a good standard for charging stations for electric cars and I've heard horror stories of people trying to get to a charger they're about ready to run out of charge and find out that it's incompatible with the car that they own and it looks like that's what I'm gonna have to deal with on this one as well if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.